five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are with another episode of Real Talk with BP. And if you can't handle the heat, then get out the kitchen. Speaking of kitchens, let's talk about Thanksgiving. What a time to be alive, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. But now we're on to Christmas time, the time we've all been waiting for. But let's talk about the food on Thanksgiving, ladies and gentlemen. I had a great time. Food was amazing. Uh, what we do is we have uh, two separate Thanksgivings. I have a Thanksgiving with uh, my aunts and uncles and my grandmas. And then uh, a couple days later, I have a separate Thanksgiving for my other grandma who can't really make it down with us. So we uh, bring her down for one day and uh, we eat Thanksgiving and have a good uh, nice little turkey and mashed potatoes and all that other good stuff. But uh, I'm more of a ham guy, to be honest with you. Uh, not too fond on the turkey. Uh, I just, to me, turkey's just a little bit dry. Uh, you know, you can put, you know, gravy and stuff on it. But I just, not a big turkey guy. I mean, I'll eat turkey sandwiches and things like that. But when it just comes to, you know, the normal turkey bird, Thanksgiving bird, yeah, not too fond of it. I'm more of a, a ham, ham type of guy there. But uh, there's a... So there's something, you know, I realized this past Thanksgiving that, you know, I, I've never thought about before. And once you hear this, you're going to realize that you've never thought about this either. Okay. We're going to talk about mashed potatoes. Okay. And they're potatoes. Okay. Just like fries. Just like hash browns. Okay. Just like potato chips. Made out of the same thing. Okay. Now with fries, you could put ketchup on fries. You can put ketchup on hash browns. And you know, I've even seen someone put ketchup on plain Lay's potato chips. Now what I've never seen is someone put ketchup on mashed potatoes. I've never seen it done. I have never seen someone put ketchup on mashed potatoes. I don't know if it's just the texture or if it's the taste. But if you can put ketchup on fries or mashed potatoes, I mean not mashed potatoes, but fries or uh, hash browns, I don't see why mashed potatoes would be any different. And... You know, you're probably listening to this thinking, like, that just doesn't seem right. It's almost like, like, if you do it, you feel like you're breaking a law. You're like, you're committing a crime if you put ketchup on mashed potatoes. Now, I'm not saying I do it. I'm not saying that I'm going to be the first to try it. Matter of fact, I would like somebody to, you know, make some mashed potatoes and, and try it. And please tell me how, you know, what how it is because I, I am very curious on this because I you know ketchup on potatoes just seems like the way to go you know french fries like I said before and hash browns and you know you got the you know the one in a million people that put ketchup on Lay's potato chips but that's a different story I have tried that though that uh that's not too bad I don't think I could eat that for a normal snack but you know, it's it's not too bad. And, uh, you know, Thanksgiving wouldn't be Thanksgiving without football, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just, let's be real here. The the good Thanksgiving football game, Detroit Lions. <sighs> what a bummer, right? Started off strong, you know, beginning of the season. Thought the Lions were going to, you know, really make a push this year. Then they go and they... They lay an egg on Thanksgiving, like usual. Something's got to change, ladies and gentlemen. And honestly, I don't even think it's the coach. I think the people in the front office, general managers, owner, you guys got to go. Because we've you, you can't say we haven't had some decent coaches in the past. We've had. And Matt Patricia is I th I think being a first you know not not a first year head coach but 
just I believe he's coming into his own here, okay? He's been underneath, you know, Bill Belichick's wing for a while, you know, coach of the Patriots. Give him time, ladies and gentlemen. Give him time. I know that we were all devastated by the draft pick of TJ Hawkinson, but he turned out to be a stud. I'm telling you, give him time and things will be okay because you guys need to understand what he's doing here, okay? You need to understand what he's doing. Who had a good tight end and a good quarterback? The Patriots, Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski. Now, am I saying Matthew Stafford and TJ Hawkinson are going to be the next Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski? Absolutely not. There's going to be, it's going to be hard to find another pair like that. But what I'm saying is you need to see what Matt Patricia is trying to do. Okay. And if he's able to pull it off, things, things could change for the better. All right. But let's talk, uh, let's talk about some other, uh, football news here. We got the Davis and Cardinals winning the state championship for the first time. Congratulations to everybody over there. Worked hard, uh, seen a couple of the games and you you know, you got to look at these guys and you you're talking about you know, several several kids that are about 63, 64 major athletes, okay? And a lot of those guys uh, yeah, they're graduating, but they also got got a few that are coming back that are just going to be studs. And uh, I don't see why they can't make another push to uh, go to the state championship again. They're uh, they got uh, they got some good guys coming back, and you know it's going to be a good future for them for sure. Um, almost like a like an early Christmas for them if you think about it, winning the state championship for the first time. You know, no, everybody loves a early Christmas present. So, you know, there you go, Davis and Carlos, J- D- uh, Davis and Cardinals. My bad. Merry Christmas. Uh, let's also talk about uh, presents here. You know, early Christmas shopping, if you will. Black Friday, always a hectic time of the year. I went Black Friday shopping. It wasn't too bad. Went out to Birch Run, uh, picked up a few things. I, uh, I had. Uh, had some good deals going on here and there, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, wasn't too wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Okay, because you look at some of these other stores and people are just bombarding you right as soon as you walk in, pushing, shoving, trying to get what they want. But you know, not not in Birch Run. I thought Birch Run would be really bad. But it really wasn't. Okay, I got my things, got in line, and then I left. Um, I bought a a Levi Sherpa jacket. Oh, most comfortable thing I've ever worn. I love it. Absolutely love it. And I got it for like $40 off. That was probably one of my best purchases of the night. I loved it. I wear that thing almost everywhere now. It's amazing. Uh, bought a few sweatshirts, a uh, few crew necks. I'm a big crew neck guy. I love them. Um, just like a sweatshirt without a hoodie. I mean, <laughs> what's not to love? And then uh, went and I bought, uh, let's see here. What else did I get? Uh, the jacket. Oh, I bought two Kelvin Klein shirts. And if you know me, I love Kelvin Klein. Kelvin Klein is my go-to suits, regular, just nice clothes to go out in, love it, love Kelvin Klein, I would recommend, if you're a male or female looking for, Kel- you know, something nice to go out in, go to Kelvin Klein, it's a place to be, um, then, oh, I went to, uh, went to GameStop, not a big video game player anymore, gotta be completely honest with you, uh, I just don't have time, um, with work and school, I, I really find it's really hard to find time to, you know, sit down and actually, you know, play games and play video games and stuff like that. But I had to pick up, had to pick up two games, had to pick up FIFA 20 
and I had to pick up Modern Warfare. Okay, I've heard a lot of good things about Modern Warfare, and so far, put the game in, started playing. I love it so far. Even though I don't play that much, still a fun game to get on once in a while. And uh, FIFA is another thing, too. I've never been a big soccer guy, big soccer player, but, you know, that's what makes FIFA fun, you know. Being able to do something you never really were used to doing. And, uh, yeah, you know. I But, honestly, video games to me, they're, they're not as important as they were when I was, you know, a little kid. Because I used to play video games all the time as a little kid. But now, I just have different priorities. And, you know, I got to make sure those things are straight before, uh, you know, I get other things going. And, uh, you know, it is nice to sit back and relax and play video games, though. I'm not going to lie. So, yeah, nice little early Christmas present for me, myself. You know, sometimes you got to spoil yourself and, you know, buy things. But Christmas time, ladies and gentlemen, is the time that we have been waiting for. The time you spend money on your significant other and the... The time where people spend money on you. But the thing is, is we need to put the money aside, okay? Don't even think about the money. Think about the people that you're with. Think about the presence. Now I'm saying presence. Not presence, as in gifts, but the present presence of someone being there with you, okay? Because... We get caught, all caught up on the material things that we don't focus on the most important, and that's the people right around us. So this holiday season, I want you to to go out and, you know, say thank you or tell somebody how much you appreciate them because you got to make sure they feel special because there's people out there that, you know, think that, you know, they don't feel special or no one really cares about them. But let me tell you, you let someone know in your life in the next couple of days that they matter and how much you care about them. I'm telling you, it's going to change change their day, all right? Make them 10 times happier because Christmas time isn't about what you get. It's about who you spend the time with, okay? And I believe that wholeheartedly. I don't care if I get anything else for Christmas. You know, that doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is who I spend the time with. Matter of fact, this is a this is going out to everybody I went to high school with and all my friends I've made in college. If there's anybody out there that wants to do something for Christmas or just wants to get have a big get together, have a Christmas dinner. And now it doesn't have to be on Christmas because I know everybody's busy. But a couple of days before, I know everybody's back from college, you know, for Christmas break. So I'm putting this out there right here, okay? Have it at my house, have it anywhere we want, I don't care. Get together, enjoy food, and just enjoy having other people around. Because in life you can't make it alone. And I believe Christmas time is a very valuable time to realize and how many people you actually have. Because there's times where you don't realize that people are in your corner. And you need to understand that, okay? And it's okay. To have people in your corner. Because it's, it's, it's hard going through life alone. It's almost impossible. So with that being said. Leave, leave a comment or hit me up. And we'll get, we'll get a Christmas dinner situated. Okay. Because I want to be in the presence of people who are. You know. Who are loving. And, you know, need need some encouragement. And, you know, friends. I just want to be with friends, family, 
you know, no matter what. Even if you don't know me and you're on here listening, come on over. Hit me up. I'll invite you over. I'm not going to turn anybody away. All right? Because everybody needs to feel loved. But let's talk about Christmas for a minute, okay? Now, I don't know how many of you do this, but I like to go out and, you know, just drive around and look at the lights that people put up around their house. I think it's fantastic because you look at some of these houses and they're just beautiful, beautiful. Got lights hung up almost everywhere, Um, got them on the roof, got them on pillars, you know. Just amazing. And then you got the people that got the giant inflatables in their front yard. Oh, it's fantastic. Gotta love the, the giant Santa in his sleigh out in out in the front yard. Then you got the... I love seeing the churches. You know, you drive by and they have, you know, Merry Christmas and big giant ladder, uh, letters staked in the ground. Or they got love, peace, and joy staked in the ground and these are giant letters ladies and gentlemen and you love to see it i believe christmas time is the i want to say the only holiday where almost everybody gets involved or at least shows some spirit because you you look at thanksgiving some people kind of brush off thanksgiving and move straight to christmas some people you know, I hate to say it, but some people brush off Easter, which, you know, if whatever religion you're in, I can understand that. Um, and, you know, I just feel like Christmas is really the only holiday where everybody, you know, kind of takes part in. Even Ebenezer Scrooge took part in it, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking of Ebenezer Scrooge, I watched uh, A Muppet's Christmas Carol last night. Oh, man, I love the Muppets. Love them. Love the Muppets. No matter what what show it is, amazing. But, yeah, the Muppets Christmas Carol was was a good one. Watched it with my mom. Spent some good quality time with her. She ended up falling asleep on me, though, so that's okay. But, uh, yeah, the lights are, are amazing to go and look at. But one thing that I kind of want to do is... Uh, I want to go and look at the Detroit Zoo lights. I've never actually, you know, been to see the lights at the Detroit Zoo. You know, mainly because I've never had anybody to go with. And, you know, I don't want to go alone because I feel like that's just kind of weird. And, you know, it'll just make me feel even more lonely. But... If someone's out there looking for someone to go to the Detroit Zoo Lights with, I'll go with you. Don't worry about it. You know, look for someone to go with. I'm right here. But, yeah, you know, I just think that's, you know, that'll be something fun to do. You know, experience. Something I want to experience for sure. Then we got, uh, I know Frankenmuth always has a lot of things going on around the holidays too. So, I might go and uh, walk around in Frankenmuth and see what's up around there. But um, I think one of my favorite things about Christmas time is the music and the movies. First, let's talk about the music. I'm a big Christmas music guy, okay? Now, this may irritate a lot of people, but I could listen to Christmas music all year round. I, that's just how much I love it because it just ma- it makes me happy. It is so joyful. It's not negative. I just, you know, I love it. I can listen to it every single day. Now, I know there's people out there that's like, I can't stand people who who listen to Christmas music all year round or people who leave their lights up all year. Now, leaving your lights up and listening to Christmas music all year round are two different things, okay? Okay. Lights I can understand. Like, there's a certain point where you have to take those down. But Christmas music? I can I can listen to that all the time. 
Because it ju- it is so joyful. Okay? Now, Christmas movie- movies. I, l- I love the old animated Christmas movies. Like, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Or, uh, Heat Miser and, uh, what's his other name? Snow Miser, something like that. I, oh, those those two are great. I love them. Love them. I love Christmas movies. I'm saying movies. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But yeah, Christmas movies are amazing. Um, cause I, I get I get the Christmas movie song stuck in my head. Rudolph, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, the old animated version. I know everybody has seen that before. If not, you need to go check it out. Okay. But yeah, Christmas movies are movies that you can just sit down and enjoy, get a hot glass, you know, a a hot thing of, you know, hot cocoa with marshmallows in it and just relax, snuggle up in a blanket, get all cozy and watch some Christmas movies. Matter of fact, this weekend, if you're not working not doing school work and you're laying down turn the lights off grab yourself a hot glass of hot cocoa put some marshmallows in it and put a Christmas movie on that's what you need to do I'm telling you it's a good way to ease your mind and relax and I'm telling you you'll end up at the end of the movie smiling all the time Christmas movies are essential to everybody's life, and I believe that. Now, let's talk about Christmas trees, okay? Now, there's some people that have fake Christmas trees, some people that have real Christmas trees. Now, I'm not I'm not judging here, okay? I think if you have a Christmas tree in your home, that's all that matters, okay? Doesn't matter if it's real or fake. All right? Now, people have fake Christmas trees for different reasons. People have real Christmas trees for different reasons. We've always had a real Christmas tree. That's just how we've always done it. And we would always get the pre-cut ones. And we'd go and pick it up at either Home Depot or or we went to a church and picked it up. But the last two years, we've, you know, two years including this year, uh, we've cut down a Christmas tree. And I'm always the one to cut it down. And I'm going to be honest with, with all you. I think that is something that everybody needs to experience. I think everybody needs, if you celebrate Christmas, needs to go out and cut down a Christmas tree because it's not just about cutting it down. It's not. It's about being with your family or your loved ones because you're out there and you're looking for a Christmas tree. You're looking for something to put up in your house and for people to gather around at Christmas time. Now, what, what, do, we, what do we got? I think we got a white pine. Yeah, white pine. You can tell it's a white pine because the way it is. Okay? But, think this is the second year we got a white pine. And I I love those trees. Those trees are so cool looking. But uh, this year, we we couldn't really find too too many good Christmas trees out in the, the tree field, tree farm, whatever you want to call it. But we we saw one, and we were like, you know what, this one's going to do. This one will be fine. And we got it home, put lights on it, and it's beautiful. Beautiful tree. Looks are deceiving, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Just because you look at something once doesn't mean that's how it is, okay? Cut it down, wrap it up, take it home shake it out, 
get it inside, put Christmas lights on it. it. turns out to be a beautiful tree. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> but every time I think about uh, cutting down a Christmas tree, I don't know if you guys ever watched um, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Oh, it's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Um, well, they cut it down from outside and they bring it in. And what they don't know is there's a, there's a squirrel in the tree. And when Clark is, you know, looking through the tree and because he hears something in there and a squirrel pops out and everybody just goes crazy. It's oh, it's funny. Absolutely hilarious. Oh, that's another movie I think you guys should watch, too. Have a good laugh. But, uh, yeah, you know, Christmas trees are very important in everybody's lives, I believe. Because it's a, you know, when you think about Christmas, you think about Santa Claus, presents, and Christmas trees. I mean, come on now. But... Oh, let's talk about presents, too. All right. So, presents. I feel like when you get older, the less presents you get. <laughs> because when I was a little kid, I would get so many action figures and, and all my favorite were the Nerf guns. I love the Nerf guns. Amazing. But... You just get bunches and bunches of them. And then you get older and older and you realize that the things that you want are more expensive. And because they're more expensive, that means you can't get as many toys. Yeah. <laughs> but then then you got got good old Santa Claus. Santa Claus always comes in and saves the day. I love that man. I actually met Santa Claus once. Um, you know, I went up and uh, I was traveling a little bit. And he was making his way through Frankenmuth. It was during the winter time. He was making his way through Frankenmuth. And he was on top of a rooftop. And, you know, <laughs> I shouldn't say I met him. I seen him once, okay? He was on top of a rooftop, and he was being very quiet, so no one could see him and hear him, but I was able to catch a glimpse of him, and then I had to take a double take to make sure it was really him, so I looked back, and poof, he was gone, but you gotta thank the big man, alright, Santa Claus, he's made so many, you know, Christmases for everybody, you know, fantastic, um, Christmas wouldn't be the same without him for sure. <laughs> but, you know, and then the reindeer. Man, almost like those guys never age. But uh, I wonder how Rudolph's doing. Hopefully he's still doing strong. But, um, what is it? Well, yeah, the presents, the presents. You know, I just started, you know, you know, I just stopped asking for presents. I was like, you know what? I'll be happy with whatever you guys get me, you know? Because, like I said before, I'm not a materialistic person. You know, I'd rather be in someone's presence than someone gift me something. So, you know, I'm just, I'm there and I'm just like, you know what? Whatever you give me is what you give me. I'm just happy I'm here with you, right? Unless you give me socks and underwear, okay? As a kid, I hated those, all right? You know, you would, you know, you'd see your family members give you presents, and then you're like, oh, man, this is going to be awesome. What is this? You unwrap it, and it's, it's a pair of Fruit of the Loom underwear, and then you got the the knee-high socks, and it was like, what are these? It was like, they're to keep you warm in the winter. Yeah, thank you, appreciate it, but now, when I'm an adult, I appreciate those things 
a whole lot more. <laughs> I uh, I know what's what's important as you grow up. All right, you know I'm not I'm not asking for for you know action figures anymore. I want a pair of heavy duty socks that'll keep my feet warm. But um, yeah, you know, hopefully for Christmas, Santa Claus will bring me a camera so you guys can actually you know watch me as I do do my podcast. Wink, wink. But yeah, I'm I'm still a broke college student, ladies and gentlemen. But with that being said, I am proud to announce that my first year of college is officially paid off in full. No loans, nothing. Officially paid off. Something that I'm proud of, you know. Now, I just got to, you know, make it through next semester, then we'll be good, okay? Paid it off today. Feel amazing. And hopefully this good energy that I have right now, because I've been trying to be more positive lately, you know, because I believe that I can make a change in this world, okay? And I believe that if if you have a mindset, if if you have a mindset that you can change the world for a better, you can do it. Everybody out there can change the world for the better. Now, you can either make a big change or a little change, but that doesn't matter. A change is a change. And right now, I just want to make a change for the better. No matter what it is, how big, how small, that doesn't matter to me. As long as I can make a change for the better, that's all that I care about. So, going into the new year, that's my resolution. Saying it right now, write it down, keep it in a book. I want to make the world a better place. Starting now. Not even going to wait for the new year. Starting now. But can you really call that a resolution? I don't think so. Ah, whatever. No matter what, I'm going to make the world a better place. That's my goal, and I'm going to achieve it. But coming in the new year, there's a, you know... Well, I'm going to start out like this, okay? After high school, people started going their own way and started going into new areas and new fields that are either hobbies or some people that want to turn them into careers. And I think that's amazing, okay? Go out and achieve your goals. Be what you want to be, okay? And I'm telling you this right now. There's people out there that that are doing great so far, okay? And I'm going to give a shout out to a couple people because I feel like they need to get noticed. Um first off, we have uh Samantha Taylor. Uh she does photography. Uh, I've known I know she f- has took some photos at a couple weddings and she's done a few senior pictures and she also does uh creative shoots and different she just does she does a bunch ladies and gentlemen um and the quality of the pictures when they come out are are amazing uh i seen a few things that she posts online and you know a few things that she's took of a couple of my friends and even self self pictures of her uh end results are amazing so if you want to you know get your picture taken or you know, get a family family photo shoot or or a holiday shoot. Uh, definitely, definitely get a hold of her. Uh, I know her photography account on Facebook and Instagram is Sammy T Photography, I believe. Um, if not, um, I know you can you know look her up on Instagram or or whatever. Uh, her name's Samantha Taylor. But definitely give her a, give her a call or messenger about getting uh, some photos done because I'm telling you the end result's definitely worth it. Uh, pictures turn out amazing, and then uh, another another one of my good friends here, uh, Jack Sayer, Jack the John Sayer. Never know 
Never really understood what his first name was. I don't know if I still don't know if it's Jack or John. And I've known him for a while. Love this guy. Um, he's actually running for the school board, uh, Swords Creek School Board for 2020. And uh, I'm not just saying this because he's a really good friend of mine, but uh, I believe that he has uh, has some really good ideas that he can give to the school board and give the community. And I believe that, you know, that'll be a good vote for you guys. So if you guys, now you have to be a registered voter. Uh, you have to go to the Secretary of State and register to be a voter. And then once you have that done, uh, for the, the voting of 2020, you can go to your nearest polling place, nearest place where you go to vote, and his name's going to be on the ballot. So simple as that, be a registered voter, go to the nearest polling place, and vote for Jack the John Sayer, or John the Jack Sayer, whichever way it is. doesn't matter. Just make sure you vote for him. has a lot of great ideas in that big head of his. Um, very smart guy as well. Very smart. Um, uh, kind of a handyman too. Um, guy does it all. Love him. You know, hopefully he hears this. Shout out to you, big guy. But, uh, moving on. Got one more shout out. And I, sh you know, I gave them a shout out last one. And I just want to make sure you guys, you know, really go you know, watch them and give them attention and give them the support they need because they deserve it. They work hard. Uh, it's ADP again, a different perspective. And like I said in the last episode, they got a show coming up December 8th. It's on Sunday. Uh, I believe it's 5, five to 8. 5 to 8.30? I think, I think so. If... Um, if you want to go back, it is in my last episode, um, but you can also find the exact dates and times of their shows. Um, I know that some of the band members have it on their page. Uh, you can either go look at Jackson Newhart, uh, Alex Loafman Jones, uh, Shane Wheeler, Brennan Pinkston, uh, any of those guys. Uh, they're they're performing with. Corner Wall as well, another another big band uh, trying to come into their own. But uh, I wish the best for both of them, and uh, I hope uh, the new year brings them a lot of a uh, lot of work and a lot of a lot of good luck going their way. But uh, yeah, you know, going back to schooling and stuff like that. Crazy to think that we're in college, right? Time, now when, when people say time flies, they really do mean it. Like, I can't believe that I'm, I'm almost done with my first semester of college. It's insane. I remember when I was in preschool doing little finger paintings. And now I'm, I'm out here trying to write an eight-page essay that's due in a... When is it due? Ah, uh, that's for a different day, but yeah, you know, times go by, and there's a song by Kenny Chesney that makes me tear up almost every time I listen to it, and that's Don't Blink, because that song is so true, you know, if you listen to that song, it'll make you tear up, because it'll make you remember all the good times that you had and all the good times that you're going to have. And it makes you, you know, it's a good reminder to, you know, to not take anything for granted and enjoy the moment. But, yeah, you know, it's crazy to think that we started in preschool and now we're, we're here where we are now. Matter of fact... When I was in preschool, I feel like all I did was paint in preschool. Like, I don't know what the deal with that was, but, like, I feel like all I, I did was just paint, paint, paint. And now I'm like, I don't paint at all. Like, I have nothing to do with that. But, not, not gonna lie, I used to be a little Picasso 
all right? I still like I have this one painting and it's framed and I be- I feel like it it belongs in like an art museum or something. Now I'll post a picture of it, you know, somewhere on my one of my social media accounts, but this painting beautiful strokes kind of a dark dark image a lot of grays blacks you know with with shades of blue and little little hints of white in there it's it's amazing picture matter of fact i might sell it i might sell this picture starting off at $250 that's the starting off price now, prices are non-negotiable, okay? Non-negotiable. Had to make sure I repeated that. Not going to go lower. Will go higher, though. I will say that. I will go higher on the price, but I won't go lower. 250 is where I'm starting out at. Um, I'll post pictures of it. And if you want to take me up on that offer, just let me know. But, yeah, this... This picture is amazing. It's a great piece to have, you know, on your your main wall in your house to where everybody can see it. Like, you put that up and they're like, wow, that picture is amazing. Where do I get one of those? Who's the artist? And when they ask who the artist is, you can tell them it's me, but I'm sorry, I'm retired. I don't paint anymore. I'm actually looking at the picture right now. It's a beautiful picture. Love it. But yeah, you know, that's the thing. Now, was it was it Picasso that had his ear cut off? I'm going to look that up. Because I, I believe Picasso had his ear cut off. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But I'm looking it up right now. Because I feel that Picasso... Had his ear cut off. Let's see. Picasso. Ear. Let's see this. The secret of Picasso's ear. Um. Let's see. So he had a very large ear. And... Wait. Wait. No. He didn't cut off his ear. Did he? Or was it Van Gogh? If some artist cut off his ear. I don't know who. Okay. It wasn't Picasso. It was Van Gogh. Who cut off his... His earlobe? He cut off his earlobe. That's interesting. For some reason, I thought Picasso cut off his ear. But no, he didn't. It was Van Gogh. Why would someone cut off their ear? Like, have you thought about that? Like, Now, now Van Gogh didn't cut off his whole ear. He just cut off a part of his ear. But if you think about it, like... What what's the purpose? Maybe they just don't like how their ears look? Maybe. I don't know. I know Mike Tyson bit that one guy's ear off because he was mad. That's actually a funny story. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but after Mike Tyson bit off Evander Holyfield's ear, was that it? Yeah, I think it was Evander Holyfield. Uh, yeah. Mike Tyson bites Evander Holyfield's ear off in a boxing match. And I believe Mike Tyson sent back in a box, like a little gift rack box. Mike Tyson sent <laughs> Evander Holyfield his ear back. Isn't that isn't that crazy? Uh I 
maybe it is. I don't know. I don't think he sent it back. Because that'd be kind of weird. Why would he even have it, though? Maybe that's just a story I heard. Okay, hold on. He did give it back. That is so messed up. It says, Mike Tyson, the day I gave a Vander Holyfield, a Vander Holyfield his ear back in a jar. In a... In a jar of formaldehyde. What? Yo! That's crazy. Why would they let him keep the ear? Like, don't you think, like, once, like, once your ear gets bit off, that should, like, go back to you, not the other person? That is so strange. I don't know. The world of boxing back then, right? Wow. Oh, there's this... Oh, who is it? I think... Uh, one of my... Fa- like, one of my favorite boxers... Now, I'm not a big boxing guy. I'm not gonna say I'm a... You know, huge fan. But... Someone who... I love watching... Because... To me, boxing, boxing is not as exciting as MMA. It just isn't. But someone who makes boxing exciting for me is Deontay Wilder. He he throws his punches so hard. He can, he can knock you out at any moment. Any moment in any round, if he gets a good one on you, you're you're done. Done for the count. Like he's that he just has so much power. Now, I believe now this is gonna be a good fight. If let's see, Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury too. Um uh, I don't know. Cause the thing is is I know that Anthony Joshua and Andy Ruiz are fighting again, but I don't think Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder are fighting again yet. I would like to see them fight again because that was a crazy matchup. Tyson Fury got knocked down in the 12th round. 12th round. Knocked down. Knocked out cold. Knocked out cold, like eyes rolled to the back of his head, done. But he gets up. He gets up, stands up, moves around, shakes it off. Then he gets back to fighting, ends up losing. But he got back up. Almost like he rose from the dead. Now, I urge you guys to go watch that video because that is like... That is a true definition of mind over matter. He wanted it that bad. He literally came back to life. Stood up. And and kept fighting. And it's not like he was just, you know, bouncing around. Or anything. Or, you know, trying to avoid hits. He was throwing. He was throwing the hands in there. Which was insane. But. um, Yeah, you know. Not a big boxing fan. But. Deontay Wilder is different, definitely someone that I find exciting. Almost like he's out of this world, you know? Like, how is it that someone can hit that hard? I mean, the last person that I know that could hit that hard and I've only seen from films was Mike Tyson. That was the last person. But uh, speaking of out of this world, let's talk about UFOs. Unidentified flying objects. Now, there's a big misinterpretation of UFOs. And one of them is that people think they're automatically connected to aliens. Which are not, okay? UFOs are exactly what I said. Unidentified 
flying objects. So what that means is that we don't know what that is. Like, we don't know what's flying in the air. We don't know if it's, you know, a single manned aircraft or an unmanned aircraft or it's something we've never seen before. But that doesn't mean that it belongs to an alien. Now, the fact that aliens are real or not, we'll get into that in a minute. But, UFOs could belong to someone in a foreign country, could belong to something that someone built in their garage, in their backyard, could be anything. Doesn't connect with aliens whatsoever. Now, UFOs could look like anything, but I think the biggest interpretation of UFOs are big, round, you know, circular objects, right? Now, I'm not going to say like a sphere, because it's not like a sphere, but you know what I'm saying, right? And people have had many sightings of UFOs, but, you know, that's on you if you want to believe that or not. Me, personally... Me, personally, I believe in UFOs. Now, believing in UFOs and believing in aliens are completely different. I believe that there is some type of object or something that could be flying around that we have no idea what it is, okay? Obviously. But, now the question arises, are aliens real? Yes, I believe they are, and I'll tell you why. I believe, I believe in our Lord and Savior, you know, God, and I believe that He made us on this earth. He, he made the earth, okay? I believe that, you know, He is almighty, but... Some things I do wonder about. And dinosaurs, okay, we have evidence that, you know, dinosaurs are, they were real, okay. But the thing is, is that if he made us and he made dinosaurs, why would he stop there? If there's, because you got to look at space, and you have to realize how big space is. We're we're almost like a little speck of dust in space. Like you know how you see the dust particles when the light shines through the window, we're that. That is what we are in space. Space is, it's insane. It's scary to think about how big space is. Because, in my opinion, if you think that we are the only, only civilization, the only living things in this universe, you're crazy. Because space is, space is unimaginably huge. We don't even know what's out there. Like, what, what? For example, how much of the the ocean has been discovered? I'm looking that up right now. Let's see here. Five percent. Five percent of the ocean and the ocean, okay, you got you guys know what the ocean is. Five percent of the ocean has been explored. That means ninety five percent has not been explored. So just imagine all the living creatures that we have no idea were are out there. On earth. On earth we don't even know. So you want to tell me right now that you know for a fact 
that there is nothing else out there, that there is nothing else in the universe and in other universes, when we haven't even discovered the ocean, like, there's still nine... Five percent of the ocean is nothing. There's 95% left that we haven't discovered. And you want to sit here and tell me that aliens aren't real or other civilizations out there don't exist. Whatever. I'm not believing it. Not believing it one bit. Now, as usual, I'm going to say this again. If you want to argue with me or if you want to come in and prove your case... You're more than welcome to. The seat's wide open. But all I'm saying is that we have no idea what's out there. And I believe, I believe that there is something out there. Now, I'm not going to say that I know this for a fact because I obviously don't. Okay, and I'm not going to go and put it in a book and say, yes, there's other things out there. You know, you need to believe me. You can believe what you want to believe. Okay. But what I'm saying is that don't jump to conclusions and say we're the only thing here. Okay. Because. You don't know that. I don't know that. All right? Because why why would he stop at making us and stop at making animals? Did he just, you know, make a list of all the things that he wanted, you know, to be made and just stop with us? I just just don't think so. And I, I am grateful that he made us. I'm grateful that he, you know, made everything in my surroundings and made everything in my life. But I'm just saying I really don't think he stopped with us. Now, I don't want to turn this into some type of religious belief here or whatever because, you know, you may have your own beliefs and I will respect those. But in my opinion, aliens are real. And I believe that wholeheartedly. I need to have someone like on here that really knows space and really knows like like what's going on out there. Like like Neil deGrasse Tyson. DeGrasse? DeGraw? Neil deGraw Tyson? How do you say his middle name? How do I don't know. But he's a famous, like, smart guy. I'll I'll just put it that way. He's a famous smart guy. But, or Elon Musk. Ooh. Well, Elon Musk is more of an artificial intelligence kind of guy, but I'm going to save that for another podcast. But, wow, that's actually, let's talk about the ocean for a minute because, When I looked that up, that was kind of shocking. Only 5% has been discovered. Now, is it that we just don't want to discover the other 95%? Or do we just not, are we just not capable of it? Because I feel, I feel now, the the day that we're living in now, we, we should be capable of discovering the other 95%, or at least continuing the discovery of it. And the thing is, let's talk about, like, the Loch Ness Monster, okay? Is it real or no? Like, you would think by now they would they would figure it out, but I, 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 I don't think that's real, though. I really don't think so. But, who knows? And Bigfoot? Another one, we don't know if that's real or not. Are Bigfoot and the Yeti the same thing? The abominable snowman? I think they are. What if, like, all those are, like, 
the same species, but like, hmm, like like they're all the same species, but like they just live in different areas, kind of like humans. You know what I'm saying? Like we have the Americans, then you have the the Chinese, then you have like the Italians, and they all live in different different areas. Maybe that's, like, what Bigfoot and, like, the Yetis are, you know? But, hey, that that's a topic for another day. Um, but, hey, you know what? Let's, let's, I'm going to end it with this, okay? Enjoy the presence of other people, okay? Because... When you have other people in your right in your life, it makes things easier and it makes things more fun. Okay? You need people, all right? You need them. You can't go through life alone. I know that and hopefully you know that too. Um just wanted to say thank you for all the support that everybody's given. Uh really appreciate it. Keep the follows, keep the likes coming. Uh, If you have any suggestions or if you want to make a visit appearance or a special appearance on on the show, just let me know. Um, I'll get back with you as soon as possible. But with that being said, this has been Real Talk with BP. If you can't handle the heat, get out of the kitchen.